This is the video and live streaming show. I'm John Lacey and this is Sam Proof. And today we're talking all about community. So how do you find your tribe? How do you build your community? How do you moderate that community? And what's the deal with chatbots? So we're going out <laughs> live to all of the places. So let us know in the chat where you're coming to us from. And, uh, you know, how, how you actually work with building your own audience. We'd love to hear that in the chat. Hello, Sam. How are you doing? Good, John. How have you been? Yeah, pretty, pretty good. Um, it's sort of my first week back at my day job officially. So that was oh, yeah. a bit of a culture shock after some holidays. But, you know, it's, it's good to be back in the swing of things. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a real job right now, but I actually feel the same way where I like let go of a lot of habits and I'm like, okay, I think it's time to get back into whatever the hell I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So um, as I mentioned, we're going out uh, to all of the various places uh, today. So if you're out there, um, say hello and Insomnia Doodles is saying hi. Nice to meet you, John. Um, nice to meet you too. Hello, um, so yeah, uh, today we're talking about community and I guess, um, Sam, one of the things that I kind of hear quite often is create with your audience in mind, but I guess the problem with that is you may not have an audience when you start. So, you know, how, how should we be approaching that, especially in the early days, do you think? Right. You also may not have anything in mind. Case in point, when a lot of us got started, uh, us being the two of us, um, back in the in the early days of YouTube, it was just throw content out there and because we just wanted to make videos. We just wanted to talk to people. There was no uh, forethought to it. We weren't making a show about streaming, a show about content creation. You know, So a lot of people may be struggling to go, well, who the hell is my audience anyway? Uh, and I, I think there's a lot to that where you need to take a step back, look at what you are doing, uh, you know, and maybe there is something to what your content is if it's not clear um, and figure that thing out. Like maybe you are a lifestyle in in the case where, you know, this is what I am doing. This is what I am building. Um, those communities exist out there. You need to create in your head uh, what the marketing teams will call like a profile of the person you want. And it is very specific, not just down to, I'm trying to you know appeal to 18 year old dudes. Uh, you're trying to appeal to a dude named Tad who's really into football and so on and so forth. And so build out that ideal, who's this guy that I'm talking to? It's almost that thing where you're doing public speaking and you're looking straight at one person. And you're like making that connection. You're making that connection in your head. You're like imagining this person. You're figuring out who they are, what their wants are, uh, and what the content you can make for Tad is. Guys, don't make content for Tad. He sounds a little iffy. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi to Tad if he's watching, although I sadly <laughs> doubt it. Um, <laughs> I, I guess, like, especially if you're doing it for purely for fun and you, you're just experimenting, I think just try things out and see what you enjoy doing. And yeah, I, I make guess content the, for you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, it's one of those things that one of one of the reasons that I might stick or with your content or maybe move away from it is often, you know, the personality. And um, some of the cultural things that, that either make sense to my brain or just cause my brain to explode. But the thing, uh, you know, in the words of the, the great Billy Joel, don't go changing to try to please me. Because I think it's really important that you do mm -hmm. just embrace who you are and, and be who you are because it's just exhausting to try to be anybody else. Yes, there is definitely a, a give and take between what my audience wants and what I want to do. And if you're just serving the audience, then what's the point? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess, you know, in terms of thinking about uh, our audience, assuming that, you know, maybe we're starting to, to very slowly build one, um, you know, I think it's kind of worth articulating, like, who, who are these people and what are their values and, and what are your, your rituals? I, I guess, um, I, and I, Sam, I'm, I'm curious to hear a, uh, from your perspective, you know, I, obviously you've got your Sam Proof stuff and you've got the cute avalanche stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I just, 
I, I know that you've been caught referring to people as, or, or your, your audience in some ways, as Sam Fam for like, you know, 15 years now. Um, <laughs> but I, I guess, you know, how, I, I think what we want to think about a little bit is, you know, what are our values and how do we identify and, you know, what is the overlap with, with the audience? Um, I don't even know that I have a question, but maybe if you can speak sure. to that a little bit, that would be great. Yeah, no, I, I think this is actually very important, obviously. So <clears throat> I think the kitten cam is a great example of this. The Sam fam is very fluid on what the flavor of the month that I want to be doing is. So it's more about me and less about them, insomnia being one of them. Uh, but the kitten crew, which is the tribe over at uh, the cute avalanche channel, obviously they like cats. But beyond that, you know, there are values within that community we are specifically serving not just people who want to look at cats but people who want to know that we're doing good in the world we're doing animal rescue we are saving cats lives um you know uh you could take that in so many different directions we could be very anti-dog right mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you know we we definitely take sides on certain issues like indoor only cats versus people who like to let their cats outside and stuff like that. So those are all, you know, the values that you present and your community can rally against. And honestly, it, it kind of leads up to that sentiment of if you don't have haters, you're not doing it right because that's what those values in effect will do. Someone out there is going to be like, I love to let my cats outside. My cats love being outside. It's prison to put them inside. And then, well, I have facts that tell you otherwise, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> that is what it is. Um, it's you know. it's interesting because I, I hear this advice all the time and I just, I see people picking fights about things that, you know, maybe they believe in, maybe they don't. It's not immediately obvious to me if that, that is right. the case, but um I, I mean, I don't, I don't really love the idea of, of causing arguments for the sake of arguments, but I mean, right. there are things that, and I've got to tell you over the last probably two weeks now, I've been, uh, looking at, uh, <laughs> I've been looking at all the content on LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn and seeing the chat GPT stuff and just losing my mind because I, as, as Sam will know, I think it's absolute garbage and I, I don't want to interact with it at all. And I've just been taking a deep breath and saying, I want to maintain this relationship with this person. So I'm just going to keep scrolling. Um, but I, 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 that's, that's, a, that's a really good point. And I think, you know, um, one thing that's cropped up for me recently is, uh, you know, I, I think of myself as a content creator and I use those words. And it's been interesting because I, I've seen some pushback to that language specifically there are people that are like i'm not a i'm not a content creator that's not me i'm a i'm a coach who also makes content on the side or you know so, something to that effect and um i i guess you know some of the things that i keep coming back to and uh, to be honest i i feel like they're really unpopular uh, i don't know if this is a great strategy maybe everyone watching can learn from my mistake um but i i see a lot of people talking about things that are really exciting and fun. And I'm like, I, I just keep coming back to being the boring voice of reason. <laughs> I'm like, do the accessibility things, make the content yourself, write yeah. the things you care about. Um, I, and to be honest, I don't know. It, I, I suspect that's a hard sell and I'm probably just an annoying person to be around at the best of times, but I mean, it is what it is. I, I, again, getting back to that thing about not necessarily changing too much, but one thing, um, you know, I, I guess, you know, we talk about value, values and, and rituals. Um, something that, that features very prominently in my life and certainly my content is coffee. So, I mean, my, my other show is literally called Coffee and Content. So, you know, I, I talk about, you know, through coffee, all things are possible. So that's something that I, I certainly come back to for, from time to time. I guess one of the things that... Um, We've spoken about recently, I, I say recently, we've been speaking about this ever since we started this show, but mm -hmm. it's essentially about not not uh, not spreading yourself too thin on all of the platforms. And it's a bit of a tension. And I, I kind of feel like I know that people in my audience have different preferences. And there are some people, if I don't post to, post to Facebook, for example, they will never see anything I do. 
Yep. Um, but I guess the maybe the unintended consequence of this is that you can have, you know, we talk about community, but in reality, you probably have pockets of community all yes. over the internet in different places, and they may or may not communicate with each other. Um, how, how do you how do you approach that as a opportunity and a, a problem? I guess potentially. Yeah, I mean, I I think that is something that people do need to keep in mind that you will have these splinters and pocket communities and things like that, and you want to find a way to reuse your content and your prompts on the various platforms without making it. I've just ripped my TikTok video and posted it on Facebook, posted it on Instagram, posted it on YouTube. You want to repurpose that content, but so that it looks new and fresh on that particular platform. If you can be, you know, I'm talking more about content sharing at this point, but you know, within that, you do want to have calls to action to kind of nudge your community to check out those other platforms and follow you in other places. I think, um, figuring out what your central hub is so that you're not just going like TikTok, go to Instagram, Instagram, go to Facebook, Facebook, go to YouTube, YouTube, go to Twitch. You, you do, that's too much. Have one, maybe two. One is best, but there's a lot of people out there who push like email lists. And while I'm really bad at my email list, <laughs> um, I think that may actually be the best place to guide your community. If not, uh, you know, one specific platform, but then you can, the, the beauty of an email list is that's not going away anytime soon. Like that platform's not going to die randomly. And then you're like, Oh man, I had 2000 people over there. And then I remember two screen names. How am I going to find these people? Um, and I guess like we, we want to push people back to platforms that we own essentially, but yeah. I guess like even just this week, um, and, and just as a bit of background, um, we, we, we had this conversation on Restream in Restream Studio. Um, I, I'm sharing this out to LinkedIn, to YouTube, to Facebook, to Twitter and Twitch. No one knows I'm on Twitch, but I do that anyway. <laughs> and I was just thinking recently, like. I, I kind of really want to bring all my people to YouTube or LinkedIn. And I know in some ways that's a hard sell, but I've, I've kind of lately, I've just been experimenting because traditionally what I would do is if I had a video, I would just post it in all of the places. And now I'm thinking it would be really good if they watch this on YouTube specifically, because that's going to, that's, that's sort of one of the two platforms um, that I've identified that I really want to get people to. But I yeah. guess... I and we we talk about FOMO, the, the fear of missing out. I, I I guess what I've learned anecdotally is there are just people that won't spend any time on any platforms. And I, you know, uh, as an experiment this week, this is actually uh, going out on Sam's uh, Instagram account, and that's one place that I, I, don't I just don't that enjoy that being. <laughs> sorry, sorry, but yeah, we we did try to set that up, and from what I can see, it's not actually doing it because uh. Instagram is so uh persnickety on how it works it's not an api connection so looks like i messed it up sorry <laughs> <laughs> but i do think um for the sake of what we're doing here youtube possibly linkedin is the best place to point an audience to um you know I, and that's not going to be true for every kind of content creator it's not going to be true for someone maybe who's doing fitness but probably probably um unless their main thing is specifically a live fitness show, in which case I might say a different live trend, like Twitch or something. But as we are a live show, based on the content we're making and the educational value it has, I believe YouTube, possibly LinkedIn, is the best place for this to live. So that is the best place, in this case, to send those people. If you're you know, doing content that is less educational and more entertainment-y, it may not be. It might not have the the search engine value that YouTube can bring to it. So I, I guess, um, you know, if we think a little bit about how do you actually build a community in, in the first place. And I, I know we've we've sort of spoken a little bit about, um, you know, the, the, the values and, and the rituals, but I guess... And in my mind, there's there's probably, you know, two parts to this. And one is just straight up building awareness that you exist, which is yeah. pretty much where I'm living at the moment. Um, but I guess the other one is about 
sort of building relationships um, and, and just inviting people to to join you for the the ride. So, I guess you know, in terms of that that general awareness, and we've spoken about this a little bit in the past, but. My big thing is, you know, are you actually signposting your content with the words and the language that are uh, that your audience or your potential audience are actually using? Because at the end of the day, a lot of the things that we do come back down to to search and and text is really the the defining feature of our ability to find things via search. I know people will say, "Oh, but YouTube automatically transcribes my my video and that's that's good enough." But I kind of invite people to to be a little bit more deliberate about this. And I guess even, and again, I've been doing a lot of little things to my YouTube channel of late just to to, to hopefully make them uh, work a little bit better. Um, And one of, and I sort of went back to some of my earlier live streams and like they were just the name of the show and 004, so coffee and content 004. And like, that doesn't mean anything and no one's searching for that. (laughs) <laughs> I, I really need to go back in and actually watch the video again because it was several months ago and just see what it was about and update the uh, the title and, and all of the things. But I guess, you know, don't... Um, I, 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 again, we talk about values. Uh, like, this is something I really do believe in and I, I probably will stress every every time we talk. Um, but it's just, it's so important. It's such a great opportunity. And it's not massively difficult, um, but you just need to think about it a little bit more explicitly. Yeah, I I would say when we talk about building a community, one of the best things you can do is be putting your content out consistently and on a regular schedule. You can find us every Friday at 1 p.m. right here. And there you go. You you know, I have a definitive time and place that you can do. You can watch what we're doing and join us in the future. So you can promote that. Great. While you're doing that, that if it's live, while you're doing it, you can call attention to it and things like that. Um, the other thing about building community is reacting to, if you're doing a live stream, anyone who comments in your chat, don't let them hang, react to it, answer their questions. Even if it's the same question, we've talked about that before. If they're on YouTube or something else and they're leaving comments, answer those comments. You, you know, right now while you're growing it, there's no reason you can't answer the small smattering of things that are going to come through. You want to get to the point where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I can't do it's thousands of comments. I couldn't possibly. And that's when you can use that to your advantage be like first 48 hours or something had posted, I will answer every comment and that will just help it boost it in the algorithm because everyone's going to get in there and start commenting on it. But yeah, be consistent, stay, stick to a regular schedule, promote that, and talk to everyone. And I guess to, uh, in terms of talking uh, to everyone, uh, we have had some comments in the chat, and I, I think we're going to talk about this a little bit more explicitly later on, but um, Insomnia Doodles uh, was saying that um, there's a difference between haters and people who have opinions. Um, some some haters are just trolls and should be yeeted straight into the garbage, in my my opinion. Um, which, you know, I, I think is, a, is probably a fair opinion. I think in some ways... If if you're if you're new to to doing these sorts of things uh, and you don't have a lot of confidence, it can be so tempting to really embrace any advice that is is provided to you. And it's funny in even in my day job, um, I created something. I won't even get into what it was. It's it's not really important to the story. But one person who was very vocal had a lot of feedback. We made massive changes to it based on on this one person's feedback. We released it. Everyone hated it. We went back to what it was previously. So I think really um, you want to be a little bit careful about whose advice you are taking um, more generally. Um, uh, so, you know, and, and in some ways you need to decide what, what you're creating and, and really just dig in and, and not be too distracted by that. Um, and again, just as a little bit of feedback. Um also in the chats <laughs> for Sam specifically. Um, so means are saying that your your category says MTG. Yeah, I, I wasn't Twitch. I didn't see the chat because I have John <laughs> full screen so I can actually focus in because if I see the chat while we're talking, uh, he'll ask me a question and I'll be like, I have no idea, no idea what you just said because somebody over here was playing the game, uh, which yep. I actually disabled for this. But yeah, I fixed that. Apparently restream does not uh alter the twitch category or i just have to talk to john about 
altering that. We'll, we'll take a look in the future. I didn't realize it had done that. Now we're under talk shows and podcasts. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nice. uh, but I do want to say about um, uh, uh, haters versus people with opinions and things like that. We are going to get into chat moderation in a little while. Um, and I and I think that's important to uh, address that in that section when we get to it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so I guess, you know, even if you are, if you are sort of starting a creative endeavor and you are looking for an audience, um, I, I think one opportunity is to sort of find out where, you know, our fellow kindred spirits already live and sort of uh, join those communities. Uh, but I, and I say that, but obviously you want to be friend people. You don't want to spam people. And there are, there are quite explicit, um, instructions and, and rules in a lot of different communities, um, with different places. But I guess, um, you know, th there's an opportunity to, to find people because there's a good chance, you know, you haven't invented the topic you're, you're talking about. It, it doesn't exist in a, in a vacuum. So it's, it's and good to see where. have, we're... probably no one's going to watch it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, no one knows the thing yet. They can't to search something. for it. Yeah, right. No, you definitely want to appeal to a community of things that actually have people out there that are interested in finding content about that. Um, yeah, that's a very good point. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, you know, if, if you can find those people, and I guess, you know, not only do you, will you maybe find, um, you know, potential audience members, but you may actually find um, fellow creators that you can collaborate with, which is also a wonderful thing. Um, well, another thing that has been quite useful for me is just to ask people what they want to know. Um, mm -hmm. some of my greatest success on, on YouTube and, and LinkedIn specifically is just saying, Hey, what is it about OBS studio that you would like to know how to, how to do? And I, sometimes I will literally just make a video for that one person and I will mention that person by name in that video. And they will love me forever after that. It's, yeah. and it's, you know, it's maybe 10 minutes of my time to, to put it together. Um, so again, I, I guess people want to be seen. They, they, they want to be, um, you know, appreciated and interacted with. And, and I guess, you know, we do have a little bit going on the, on the chat and, um, Insomni yeah. Doodles has written this huge thing, which I won't put on the screen just it. yet, but I might just read a little bit of, <laughs> okay. um, so I think the best thing you can do to build community is be genuine. Yeah. Really care about the people who come to your channel. Remember their names and pronouns. Remember the things they tell you about their lives. See your audience as friends. That's how I like to handle my own streams anyway. I think that's that's brilliant. Yeah, I think I think I use all of that advice in my own streaming. I mean, I think everyone who's in my chat right now probably considers me a friend because I consider them a friend. Uh, except Wisebot. <laughs> and is um, that and yeah, go on. I was just gonna say, like, just as a bit of um a background for, for people watching, um, you know, in terms of chat moderation, it's always hilarious because Sam does uh link up his his Twitch channel, which has all of the bots and all of the games and like a lo lot of the time I spent I just look at the chat thinking, is that a real person? Is that an instruction to kill a zombie? I don't really know. <laughs> I, I turned off the the main bot so it wouldn't be too spammy with uh, game commands because the last few shows nobody's been playing that because the overlay is not even there. So I was like, I'll try and minimize chat spam. <laughs> um, I, and means means wrote, yeah, I'm sure we could turn up uh, to crash on Sam's couch. Um, <laughs> have, lol. <laughs> so that that's actually an emote at the end that uh oh, can okay. convert. Yep. Yeah. Sure. All right. So uh this is the the video and live streaming show. Uh, I'm John Lacey. I'm joined by Sam Proof and we're talking about community chat today. If you got questions or comments, please let them know in the chat. We're going out live to all the various places. So um yeah, I, I guess like the, the next thing that might be worth exploring, and again I know that um you do this with certainly with Qt Avalanche, and we've spoken about this previously, but uh, user generated content. So, how do you bring other people into uh, in, into your world um, in maybe a little bit more of an active way? And I know that you've you've spoken previously about actually 
uh, you know, the the Twitch uh, gives people the ability to create their own cute avalanche yeah. clips when when something exciting or fun or cute happens. Yeah, I mean, user UGC user generated content is really just a low lift way of creating a collaboration between yourself and your audience. So this could take so many forms. It could be pictures, it could be videos, literally people asking you questions ahead of time and things like that is UGC that you can turn into content, you know. Um, so it, it depends on what you're doing for like the kitten cam for cute avalanche. Some of our go-tos are, yeah, we have Twitch, so you can automatically use the built-in clipping tool. I take it one step farther and have created an in-chat command, which is exclamation mark, clip it, which will let people do it that way. So it'll just be like, boom, whatever the last 30 seconds is, is now a clip. They don't even have to go in, crop things, title it. It's completely you know low lift and just hooked up to the chat bot. Um, encouraging people to send you pictures via you know instagram or twitter or facebook always good you can have a designated hashtag that people can submit content that way uh, a jot form if you want to actually utilize it in like a blog or something um, or have the the file to download so you can play it on your stream or in your video so uh, there's an endless amount of ways to encourage people to uh be a part of what your content is. And I guess like if, if I think about YouTube specifically, um, the, the community tab is, is being rolled out to more people. And yeah. you know, you, you have the options for though the text or image uh, based polls. So even that is a very low level way of getting some yes. interaction with, with your audience or your potential audience. Um, so, I mean, sometimes it, it can just be as easy as asking a yes or no question uh, mm -hmm. and just sort of gauging that in that sense. One thing I will say is that um, <laughs> a, a very long time ago, I, I set up a, a, a speak, a speak pipe um, interaction um, uh, functionality, I suppose, on my website, which allows people to, uh, to actually record a question and have it sent to me directly. I must admit, no one has ever actually done that, but I like the idea that it, that it is potentially there. Yeah, I had something like that years ago for my YouTube. There was like, I think it was the equivalent of of a Google Voice phone number that you could call and leave a voicemail. Uh, and I put it out there with the intention of people asking me questions or something. I think I got two. <laughs> <laughs> I think I still have one of those somewhere every once in a while on my like music shuffle. <laughs> this like weird clip comes up and I'm like, oh, that's right. That's from that thing. Uh, I should probably track that down and get rid of it. <laughs> Unnecessary. But Absolutely. yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think it's cool. Um, and, a lot, you know, I there is a sort of hierarchy on what people are willing to do. Like answer a poll or leave a comment is probably at the very top because that's like easiest. I can type. I can click. Great. Uh, you know take take a picture of something and post it a little harder do a video even less likely that somebody's going to follow through on that and i think you know create like a voice message is somewhere in the middle of those two so i think that's a pretty interesting thought as well absolutely and i guess um one thing that i often think about and have to remind myself um and this is actually from the the Nielsen Norman group, um, and and this this has been around for for quite a while. But essentially, uh, they've got a uh, an article the the ninety nine one rule for participation in equality in social media and online communities. And essentially, uh, you know, the one percent are the people that are actually the heavy contributors online. Nine percent are are inter um, intermittent contributors and 90% are lurkers. And I mm -hmm. think that's yep. a really important thing to remember just to, if only to, to set some expectations for yourself as a content creator, you know, the, the, you kind of want to keep it. Um, and I guess this is something I kind of struggle with a little bit because you, in some ways, if you're looking for engagement, the easier you can make that for the person, the better. But by the same token, I see some really dumb things like people will write, <laughs> kittens are cute, agree, question mark, and get like 3,000 comments. And I'm just like... But it's low lift. I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, that's that's something that sort of causes my brain to explode, so I probably shouldn't dwell on it too long. But I, I guess that's the thing. And, you know, sometimes you can write the most beautiful, perfect article and, like, it doesn't raise any questions. It doesn't cause people to want to comment. And, again, I think even last week you sort of alluded to the fact, um, uh, you know, sometimes if, you, if you're just doing it cynically for for uh you know some feedback in that regard you know putting a mistake in there or a, a typo mm -hmm. can be the, one of the easiest ways of doing that sure if you want to get that negative attention um generally <laughs> i mean i'm sure there's some some people out there who are like oh but oh you spelled that wrong it's it's your not your mm -hmm. you know whatever it is but yes there are people who deliberately put mistakes in there so that people will call them out just to get the interactivity and i I'm not sure I'm encouraging that, but if it works, it works. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think that the the 991 rule is is really helpful because that is accurate. There's definitely a majority of people who are just going to sit back and watch. And as a creator, your goal should be to nudge the 90 into the nine, to nudge the nine into the one. You know, you want to just give them a little. So if it's asking do you think kittens are cute those 90 may actually take the time to be like yes i can handle that amount of interaction <laughs> you know and then you use the the more uh thought-provoking questions on the mid group and the and the top tier to bring them over and that's that's really just how you you know build that community and get more interaction from that community and eventually you know, you can make some super fans out of that or actual friends. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> that I, I mean, both of those things would be wonderful. And I guess, you know, for the benefit, uh, particularly of, of Sam's audience, I just want to go on record as saying that, yes, I do think uh, kittens are cute, but I just, I hold some truths <laughs> to be self-evident. I mean, he's a follower. He is. He is he's on there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, at, at insomnia, uh, doodles writes preach, John. So yes, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so this is the the video and live streaming show. Um, I'm John Lacey, and this is Sam Proof. Today we're talking all about community, building a community, moderating a community, and uh, what's the deal with chatbots, which I need to know all about, and we'll get to that in a little bit. But first, Sam, um, you know. In terms of community moderation, obviously, you probably are the, the person that needs to decide what's appropriate for your community and, and what's not. Do you do that in an explicit way? Does that just happen organically over time? Um, yeah, I, I think I personally move into the organic over time kind of thing because a lot of what I do is fluid and and always changing and I'm always trying to double like figure out what things are and where to go from it um yeah uh I got lost in my own thought <laughs> <laughs> so I, I I guess you know um depending on the individual platform that you're on, they will have their own set of rules. Obviously yeah. there are laws around a lot of things. Um, but I guess, you know, you know, you want to think about making it a, a safe and respectful place for, yeah. for people to be. I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons I appreciate LinkedIn because even, even if you're having a disagreement with somebody, I think everyone's conscious of the fact that, you know, they're usually using their real name and, you know, their employers only are, um, click, uh, click away. So people are a little bit more respectful and, uh, you know, where on some of the other platforms are just completely unhinged, but I guess, <laughs> you know, do, is, is it worth sort of articulating some of those values and, you know, oh, yeah. specif specifying some of those, those rules. So, um, obviously sure. some of the, the different tools will have like, uh, you know, if, if there are specific words that you'll get kicked, that you use, so you could get kicked out of the, the chat automatically, but I guess, um, and, and I say this as someone who doesn't really have a large audience right now. So um, I, I'm really just curious uh, about what you do for, for Cute Avalanche and, and for the sure. soundproof stuff. Yeah. So I, I will approach almost every community um, when I'm establishing it with a very kid glove kind of uh, everything's family friendly, you know, because that's more inclusive than exclusive because the the 
more blue the language gets, the more opportunity for people to leave. Um, I think a lot of us sarcastic, cynical adult people who have never really left teenagehood uh, and tend to talk like sailors think, oh, everyone talks like that. But the actual data behind it is no, <laughs> we're the <laughs> outliers. More people will go, oh, I didn't realize he was going to drop so many F-bombs on this stream. I'm out of here. You know, um, there are a lot of people who will see alcohol or smoking on stream or vaping and they're gone. Um, so the less uh, sort of uber adult things you're doing on stream, the more inclusive your stream really is, the more chance you have to grow that audience. Um, so I, I approach, you know, chat moderation, mostly in that family friendly vein. Once you know who your audience is, once you know what you are, you can step back from that. Uh, you know, case in point, we do drink on our um, three, well, not, not in the morning stream, but our two weekly chats, Amanda and I do on the kitten cam. We go from the family friendly to, except for this hour, this hour, anything goes pretty much, but you know, we're not going to push the limits. It's PG 13. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I would always take the stance of try and attract the widest audience within your uh, niche as possible by not putting uh, too many uh, adult things into it to start and then pull back, you know, sure. where you see appropriate. Yeah, so that, that makes sense. Um, I just want to call out a couple of uh, yeah. comments in the chat here. So in so many doodles, uh, for me, it's a balance. I'm a little bit more loose with my rules normally, but I do a lot of, uh, I do a lot of charity streams and some like extra life compels more of a family friendly atmosphere. I try my best, but sometimes a wordy dirt, which is such a great <laughs> expression, slips through. Um, yeah, before we move on, I, you know, I, I think um, this is great. Um, when we deal with like gaming communities, I, th you know, there's gonna be kids, even though TOS says 13 or 14, I don't, depending on the platform and the, and the area, you should just expect kids to show up, you know, and maybe it depends on what game you're playing. You'll know what that is. There's a big difference between the call of duty world and the Minecraft world. Oh, it's not that big. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, play it safe. Go on. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and means writes. Uh, I think Sam has done a pretty good job of picking mods. I don't think She's any won. mods have uh, have brought their own values <laughs> to the moderation of Sam's channels. Yeah. Uh, it has to be about the channel owner, not the individual mod generally. Yeah, uh, and I want to get really into picking moderators. Uh, I think that is um, a very important thing. Every once in a while in a live streamer's path, they will have someone come into their chat and be like, can I be a moderator? And you <laughs> automatically say no. There is no world in which you go, yes, random stranger I've never talked to before. I will give you that ability to uh, kick out people from my stream. Um yeah, it's, when, when... it's funny you say that actually because um a re uh, a few months ago, LinkedIn have this LinkedIn audio events feature, which is basically just a, a you know a live video thing without the video, um and essentially I was I was only trying it out. I didn't really have a topic to discuss, but someone showed up and I thought, what the hell? Let's give them the mic. And the the next thing I knew, they were like you know asking for money and stuff, and I'm like, oh, this is really not cool. Yeah, no, I, I I would say almost the same things about uh, the people you let moderate as the people you would have as a guest on your show, for sure. I think you want to know who they are. You want to have a sense of their personality and their values. Um, but when we specifically talk about moderating, you should definitely have, if not just a checklist of what you want them to look for and do. Um, and how to handle different situations. I have something like a 40 page document that I'm sure means and my other moderators have never read the entirety of because it's 40 pages. Um, but it, you know, goes over all of the different possible things and it definitely needs an update. Um, but yeah, definitely don't, don't let strangers moderate your channel. 
know who they are. Um, and you also don't want to make so many people moderators that they outnumber the, uh, the 90% lurkers that you have. Absolutely. And uh, Joe uh, over on YouTube saying, hello, Sam and, and John. So hi, Joe. How you doing? Hope you had a great week. Uh, it's great, great that you're able to join us today. So this is the the video and live streaming show. We're talking all about community this week. And uh, we've been talking a little bit about growing your community uh, and, and moderating your community. Um, you've spoken uh, a little bit there just uh, about picking those, those people and really making sure they are good choices, I suppose, um, and, and making sure that, you know, they understand what's acceptable and, and what's not. Um, was there any any other thing that you wanted to add to that before we move on to our next topic, Sam? Uh, <laughs> By that reaction, I'm going to assume it's probably no, and that's no. fine. <laughs> I, I think the next topic is whatever else I would say right here. All right, awesome. Um, okay, so let's 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 talk about it. I've alluded to it already. Uh, I don't really understand them, but Sam is is all about the the chatbots. So take take me on this magical dive into to chatbots, um, Sam. What are they? How are you using them? What are they good for? Cool. So I just told you all not to let random strangers uh, moderate your community. So what do you do if you don't have anyone you trust? chatbots so chatbots <laughs> are uh these programs that just exist out there most of them are free i'm sure there's a few paid ones i know there's a few paid ones there's a few subscription models a few that you download to your uh desktop there's a few that exist as cloud some of them um actually handle multiple platforms for the most part they're going to be linked up to one platform but there are a few multi-platform uh, bots out there that are great and they do a lot, depending on the bot. So you can do things like chat moderation. So you can have them look for uh, a variety of blacklisted words and just hold or ban or kick people for those words or just delete the messages. Um, you can use them to release timed messages, which is great. So like you're doing a stream and every 30 minutes it goes, hey, Join Sam over on youtube.com slash samproof every Friday at 1 p.m. Awesome. Done. Uh, you can have different chat commands, which are prompts that your viewers can use to get a specific reply. Over on the kitten cam, we have new cats all the time. So some of the most common commands are uh, names and ages, which will give them the names of all the cats we are currently fostering. And of course, the ages of all of those cats as well. Uh, you can set up loyalty points, which are basically just a non-monetary digital point system that can be then used for other things. Uh, a really nice use for this is you can look at those loyalty points and be like, oh, this person has been around long enough to gain 2 million loyalty points. I might consider that for a moderator, you know, wink, wink, hi means. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of these chatbots have built in chat games, um, so you can use that to engage with your audience and encourage people to be doing something in your chat, which is always great. There are, in the case of like Twitch, uh, you have what are called Twitch events that you can link to your chat bot. So if somebody subscribes or somebody leaves like a, uh, a Twitch bit, which is their built in sort of donation thing, an event will happen on screen. So you can link it to like a stream alert a little zombie comes up and runs uh, and things like that. Uh, and one of my personal favorites is you can also link it to smart devices. So in that instance where somebody uh, follows me, these lights behind me will uh, change color or blink or do whatever you want. Uh, I, you know, I can link this to uh, a bunch of other services like IFTTT, which will then take in data from Oh, if someone follows me on Twitter, these lights will turn Twitter blue and blink. Uh, if someone follows me on YouTube, they'll turn red, you know, purple for Twitch and so on and so forth. Uh, so there's just a variety of things you can do. Um, and I'm going to be releasing a uh, blog on my uh, my Medium blog at Streamers Corner in the near future about the chatbots that I use the most, which are Batismo and Mix It Up. 
uh, mix it up app, which are, uh, they have a lot of overlap, but they also do a lot of different things. Uh, Batismo is a paid subscription mix it, but it is cloud-based, which is great. It's also multi-platform. So you can have it run on, it's, it's a good amount. It's like Twitch, YouTube, I'm going to say Prime. No, it might be Glimish. Uh, and your Discord, which is nice. There's not a big overlap of bots that run on platform and Discord. Uh, so that's nice to have as well. And Discord, we are talking about community. We should have probably talked about this earlier. It is a great platform to build your community on and engage with those people when you're not live, when you're not in the midst of releasing content. Um, the second app that I, I think I like, we, we probably do a whole deep dive on, on yeah. discord sometime in the future. Um, that's a great point. I guess, you know, you, you spoke about the, uh, triggering, um, other devices, I guess one trend I've seen on TikTok of late and is really, really bizarre to me is that people will apparently go to sleep and they'll have a board behind them that says, if you do something, uh, it'll trigger a really loud noise or the lights right. will flash violently and yeah. all these things to wake themselves up, which I probably don't recommend from a health or, um, you know, mental health <laughs> point of view, but it is, it's a, it's a very weird thing that, that certainly people are, uh, are trying out at the moment. And I just want to bring up Joe's comment here because it's incredibly, uh, relatable. So, uh, Joe writes that bushcraft has a night bot. You type uh, exclamation mark slap and the bot replies, Joe slapped Karen with a stinky fish. I have to tell you, as someone that's been on the internet for an extraordinarily long time, I remember that from my IR, uh, IRC days, that particular yeah. command. It takes me way back. <laughs> right. um, uh, uh, Q asked, uh, where, <laughs> did a follow and asked, where are them lights? I actually don't have that particular bot working for this stream because it controls a um, a game bot that I, or a game program that I ran uh, that just floods the chat with so many commands that for this particular stream, I didn't want to do it. Um, I'll see what I can do in the future. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, so, normally those lights would have changed. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I guess uh, just looking at, at, at our document here, um, so talk talk to me about timed messages specifically because that that is something that that does intrigue me um yeah how, how are you using those sure um so timed messages i use a lot of and they can be used to raise awareness around specific things uh like it's just a call to action like you know uh here's the latest video that i've done so please go follow you know go watch this um for over on the kitten cam, when our cats are available for adoption, we want to point out their bios or the adoption link. So that message will come out. If you have a brand deal, this is a great opportunity to, um, you know, work with that sponsor and be like, I'm going to drop this every X amount of time based on how much you pay me. So there you go. <laughs> you know, uh, I think that's, that's always good too. Um, and it's, it's an, also an opportunity to put out calls to action for uh, interaction, just like asking random questions. The cool thing about some of these bots like Batismo and Mix It Up app is the second one that I use. They both do timed messages and they both allow you to create, um, your camera dropped. Uh, they both allow you to create a, a randomizer. So I can have a specific kind of timed message every hour on the hour, but it's not always the same message. Like I want to use that time for uh, like a, an engagement with the audience. So maybe I'll have a list of 20 questions and it'll pick one question and randomly ask that out. So people will answer that. Uh, so that's a really good use of timed messages is to sort of uh, build in a randomizer to it as well. So they're not just always seeing follow Sam on youtube.com, you know, <laughs> like, okay, I've seen that before. <laughs> Let's move on. And that, that random, uh, that random nature of those messages is, is, is important. If I can spit that out. Yes. Um, I guess, I, and I, as a stream deck user, I know that there's an action that will tweet something out, mm -hmm. but the thing that I've got to keep in mind is that 
uh, Twitter won't won't repeat the same message more than once. I think in a twenty four hour period, so it has to be a different yeah. message, and uh, that's something that's that I've always struggled with um, in terms of of, of that re- restream. Uh, I say restream in the the stream deck. To, all these things have have uh, the word stream in them, and it's confusing. Right. But there we go. <laughs> Talking about this thing specifically right now. So there, there's an action in, in the software to actually tweet out a message. But again, you need to be a little bit creative about how you do it because it won't post uh, a duplicate message. Yeah. And and I do want to point out that uh, my stream deck for the kitten cam and for my stream uh, in, in here um, are both connected to the Mix It Up app as well. So I can make it do even the stream deck does some good stuff, but I can make it do even more complex stuff by connecting it to the chatbot. Absolutely, because I guess um, you know the the minute you are able to extend that functionality with with code, it's it's amazing. So yeah, um, that's that that's really worthwhile. So I guess um, Sam, as we're we're approaching uh, the hour, do you have any sort of final thoughts about you know? Or any reassurance, maybe, for for new uh, content creators about you know finding their audience and uh, you know just just keeping keep going. Really, I think is is the encouragement yeah. I'd probably give. But I'm I'm curious to hear what you would think. I, you know, I definitely say keep going. If you haven't started, start now. Find your schedule and stick to it. Be consistent. Don't burn yourself out. Don't be like, great, I'm going to go seven hours every day. Don't do that. <laughs> like, do what's reasonable. Um, and treat every new person who comes in with the opportunity that they will be that one percent user that is going to interact with you um and and make it fun and engaging do what you can i think um you know i think that's all good and uh even if people don't reply to you act like they have (laughs) keep talking never stop talking which is what i'm doing right now um and just take take it with what i've always said which is this is your house this is your house party people are coming in to hang out maybe they want to talk to you but maybe they want to hang out on the corner and just have a drink and and see what's going on and that's who people are and that's cool you know and i I think that's that's the point like you will have those lurkers out there they'll watch you for a really long time before they actually interact with you in the first place so don't be too discouraged if, if you see, uh, you know, smaller numbers out there. Just keep going. Make sure you know what you talk about and, you know, what you, your subject matter actually is and what you care about and and, and keep going, really. I, I, I This is very raw for me personally because even though I've been creating content for 15, 20 years, yeah. um, the, my channels are, are so new at this point that, you know, I am celebrating the fact when I get my 13th subscriber on, on YouTube and, uh, you know, a little bit of a shameless plug while we're here. Uh, you know, if you're interested, head over to youtube.com slash uh, li- learn live streaming. Um, that would be great if you could. Um, so, Sam, where can people uh, find more about you and lo- and watch your, your stuff and uh, that kind of thing? Yeah, you can find me on just about every platform as Sam Proof, but head over to samproof.tv for all the links. And you can find me streaming on Twitch most mornings um, and... Uh, yeah, three times a week over on uh, the Cute Avalanche Kitten Cam. Awesome. And if you want to catch up with anything I'm doing, you can head over to johnlacy.com. All the links are over there. So thank you, everybody. We've had some great participation in the chat today. It's been really awesome. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. We'll be back next week. We're actually talking about editing short form vertical video. Um, and Sam's going to show you his editor of choice and I'm going to show you mine. So that's what we're going to be doing there. So please uh, subscribe or follow wherever you're watching this. Uh, we'd love to for you to hang out with us again next week. So until then, have a have a great uh, have a great week, have a great weekend, and uh, keep going live. Yeah, stay strong, everybody. And if there was a talking point you'd like to hear us talk more about in the future, let us know in the comments. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon.